<clears throat> if you have your Bible with you this morning, go to John, the tw 21st chapter. The book of John, the 21st chapter, and the first verse. <clears throat> John 21 and 1. And it begins by reading this way, After these things... Jesus showed Himself again to the disciples at the Sea of Tiberias. And on this wise showed He, him, showed he Himself. Here it says that after these things, what things? Go back and read the previous chapters and you'll find in the 20th chapter, you'll find where Jesus appeared to the disciples and it gives the account of Thomas who said, I believe it when I can touch Him. Amen. It talks about how they were in a shut up room, you know, with the doors closed and Jesus came into their midst and how that He ministered to them and how that He proved Himself to Thomas. Amen. And now He's getting ready to show Himself to them again. And it says, There were together Simon Peter, verse 2, and Thomas called Didymus, and Nathaniel, no wonder they called him Thomas, amen? amen. And Nathaniel of Cana in Galilee, and the sons of Zebedee, and two other of his disciples. Yeah. And Simon Peter saith unto them, I go a fishing. Amen. Right. They say unto him, We also go with thee. They went forth and entered into a ship immediately, and that night they caught nothing. Yeah. Amen. How many people have ever been fishing before and you caught nothing? Amen. Amen. Right. It gets pretty frustrating. Amen. Amen. Hallelujah. And it takes a little bit of work. You know, if you're really going to do it like these guys did it, they were skilled fishermen. Yeah. They loaded up the equipment, they got in the boat, and they headed out into the sea and they began to fish. Amen. All right. And the Bible says that they, all that night, they caught nothing. Yeah. Here they were, and a lot of people have speculated on why Peter went fishing. I've heard preachers say that Peter, you know, wasn't supposed to go fishing, that he had no business being out there fishing. That's what Jesus called him from to, you know, whenever he came by and they were fishing, he called him from that life, and yet he went back. But yeah. the Bible never says that Jesus rebuked him for doing this. Right. Whatever the reason was, Peter decides, I'm going to go fishing. Yeah. Amen. Maybe he was discouraged like some preachers have preached. Maybe he was hungry. Amen. And wanted some fish. Yeah. Maybe he was thinking about all the times that Jesus had appeared to them or that, had, that all the times that Jesus had came to them, I should yeah. say. You remember when he came walking on the water the night that they were out in the boat? Mm -hmm. Yeah. You remember how that the storm came and the, they were being tossed and turned that time whenever Jesus was asleep in the bottom of the boat? Yeah. So Peter had some pretty good memories of the sea and the ship and these times with Jesus there. Amen? Amen? So maybe he was feeling, you know, a little nostalgic. Maybe he was feeling like he needed to go back and visit some of the places where he had spent time with Jesus. Wow. Do you remember the time that Jesus, there was a great multitude on the shore and he, had, he got in the boat and had them send it out just a little piece and he sat there or stood there and taught the people that were on the shore? Amen. So a lot of things happened along the Sea of Galilee and the journeys that Jesus took with His disciples. And it was on the sea that Peter walked that night. Amen? Whenever the storm was coming and, and whenever He got there and, and it was tossing their boat to and fro and they didn't know if they were going to make it or not and they saw something on the waters and they were afraid it might be a spirit. Amen? See, fishermen were real uh, superstitious. Amen? Probably still are today. No telling how many fishermen will tell you they saw ghosts out on the sea. Amen? But they they saw and they thought it was a ghost. And the Bible says Jesus would have passed them by except they, He heard them cry out. Amen? Oh. And when they found out that it was the Lord, Peter said, Lord, if it be you, bid me to come. Right. And Jesus said, come on, Peter. Amen. And Peter steps out of the boat and he starts walking on the water. So maybe he's thinking about some of those things. Right. Say, oh, but he began to sink. Yeah, but at least he had enough faith to get out the boat. Amen? Yeah. Amen? At least he had enough faith to get out of the boat. Hallelujah. Yeah. It's easy to sit on the fence post and tell the cowboy how to ride the horse. Yeah. Yes, sir. Amen? Can I say that again, Brother Tyler? I said it's easy to sit on the fence post and tell the cowboy how to ride the horse. Yeah. Amen? Come on. 
It's easy for you to tell, well, you know, they should have and they should have. Yeah, but what was you doing? Amen. Just sitting and watching? Yeah. Thank God he got out of the boat. Amen. Come on. When you get out of the boat and you begin walking, keep your eyes on Jesus. And if you find yourself sinking because you've become distracted, do what Peter did and cry out to him and say, Lord, save me. Amen. I feel myself sinking. I feel myself sinking. Save me. Amen. So we find them here and they go to the boat. They follow Peter. You notice that, don't you? He said, I'm going fishing. And these boys said, well, we're going to go with you. Um, Amen? We're going to go with you. Right. So they toil all night long. And what do they get for their efforts? N-O-T-H-I-N-G. Nothing. 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 Right. They toiled all night long. Yeah. And got nothing, Brother Sleece. Right. They weren't, these men were, these weren't just like, you know, like me. You know, throw a few worms in the bucket and head out to the creek. Yeah. These men knew how to fish. Yeah, sure. They were fishermen. Amen. That was their life before Jesus came along. Mm -hmm. They knew what to do. They knew where to fish. Mm -hmm. And they knew how to fish. All right. Yet all that night, in their own efforts, they told all night and they got nothing. Amen. It says in the fourth verse, But when the morning was now come, mm -hmm. Jesus stood on the shore. But the disciples knew not that it was Jesus. Right. Then Jesus saith unto them, I love this. All right. Listen to what he says to them. He knew this already. Come on. He said, Children, have you any meat? Mm -hmm. And they answered him and said, No. Mm -hmm. We ain't got nothing. Amen. All right. We don't have anything. And he knew that already. Yeah. He was asking them, What has your toiling got you? Yeah. What has your efforts without me? Uh -huh. Got you. Come on. He could ask us that this morning. Yes, sir. Amen. Right. All of the times that we tried to do it on our own. Yeah. What did we get out of it? Come on. What What can our efforts accomplish this morning outside of Him? Yeah. N o t h i n g. Come Amen. On. Nothing. Right. They told all night. They used all of their knowledge. Listen, I don't care how smart you are, preacher. Without His anointing and without the hand of God on your life, you can do nothing. Amen? Right. We've got talented men standing before thousands of people today without a drop of anointing and without that, they can do nothing. Amen? Oh, Man. Honey, give me, an old, give me an old country preacher that can't even, that can't even, can't even speak right. Amen? Don't, he's not eloquent of speech. Amen? Somebody that don't talk. You know, he uses ain't and yarn and all these words that we don't consider proper English. Give me somebody that talks heel language. Amen? If they've got the anointing of God on their life, you can keep your preacher that just came out of the seminary. Amen? And give me an old country preacher that can stand before a congregation and preach hell, fire, and brimstone. Amen? Amen. That's true. Listen, if you're out there and you're looking for a preacher, I don't think I would take any resumes from those that have graduated from cemetery. <laughs> Amen? Because while they were in there, they taught them that there was no hell. That's right. Most of them, not all of them, but most of them. Amen? Oh. Largest percentage of them come out of there believing that hell's just a figment of, or just a, an example of something. It doesn't really exist. It's just something, you know, a picture of something in the Bible, but there's no literal place called hell. Honey, I got news for you. There's still a heaven to gain and a hell to shine. Amen? The fires of hell still burn today, and the only way you will not see those is to accept Jesus Christ as Lord and Savior. That's right. Man. So give me somebody that can preach. Mm -hmm. Amen? Give me somebody that's got the anointing of the Lord because without Amen. that, you can do nothing. Right. They had told all night in their own efforts. Mm -hmm. They had worked all night. Amen. Come on. And can you imagine how frustrated they must have been? Right. I can say how frustrated they might have been. Not Probably not in the same level, but I went fishing before and didn't catch nothing. Amen. Me and Brother Billy Frizzell used to go fishing over there in the stripper pits over there in the Ohio County. And we'd get up for daylight, and he'd, you know, hook his trailer to his truck, and he'd pick me up there at the house, and we'd go drive way out there in the middle of nowhere, and we'd take his old boat, and we'd put it in the water, and it's, you know, it was half dark. I couldn't half see what we was doing, amen. It's a wonder. I couldn't see. He couldn't hear. It's a wonder we both came back alive, amen. <laughs> Hallelujah. Yeah. But we'd get his boat in the water, you know. And we'd push off and we'd go fishing. Well, we'd go over there and fish. Nothing. 
we'll, 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 we'll just move the boat over that way. That looks like a good spot. Nothing. Mm -hmm. Amen. Yeah. And it gets frustrating after a while. You're sitting there about dinner. You're sitting there thinking, man, I wish I'd stay at the house. Yeah. Amen. Come on. I could have slept in this morning. Right. Amen. Amen. I could have went to Long John Silvers and got more fish than I'm getting out here. Hallelujah. So these boys were probably frustrated. Mm -hmm. And they're thinking, man, we've worked all night and we ain't got nothing. Yeah. And Jesus comes along and he says, children, uh -huh. have you any meat? Right. What has your own efforts got you? What has your own energy gotten you? What has the skill that you know as a fisherman gotten you? Oh, Without me, nothing. Right. Amen? Right. Nothing. So there he stands and he says, do you have any meat? And they answer said, no. Mm. Oh, I love that. <laughs> I love that. Amen? <laughs> and he said unto them, verse 6, cast the net on the right side of the ship mm. and you shall find they cast therefore, and now they were not able to draw it for the multitude of fishes. Oh. Now let us recap something here. Without him, what'd they get? Nothing. N-O-T-H-I-N-G. Zilch. Nada, as the kids would say. Nothing. But with him, the fish, there's such a multitude of fish that they can't pull the net up out of the water. All right. See, through Him you can do all things. Without Him you can do nothing. Amen? Through Him you can do all things. With Him you can do all things. Amen. He had told them in John the 15th chapter and the 5th verse, you don't have to turn there because we're not through reading here in the 21st verse, 21st chapter, but it says, I am the vine, ye are the branches. Amen. He that abideth in me and I in him, the same bringeth forth much fruit. For without me ye can do nothing. Nothing. Without me, you can't do nothing. I know we get full of ourselves sometimes and we think that God needs us. Amen? Come on. You need God. Amen? Amen. Right. You need God. Mm. Without Him, you can't do nothing. Amen? Yeah. He is God. Besides Him, there is no other. Amen? Mm. He's teaching them that the branch can do nothing without being connected to the tree. Yeah. Really? Mm -hmm. right. As long as you're connected to the tree, stay with me this morning. As long as you're connected to the tree, you can bring forth leaves. Right. You can bring forth fruit. Uh -huh. You can live. Right. But the minute you take that branch off of that tree and throw it to the side, what happens to it? It dries up and it dies. Same thing happens to you. If you get disconnected from the life-giving source, amen, you will wither up and die. That's right. And even this, no matter Peter's reasoning for going fishing, mm. we could argue that point. Mm. But without a doubt, regardless of the reason that he went, Jesus is fixing to teach them a lesson. Oh, what a teacher he was and he is. Amen. amen. He still teaches us lessons today through the different things that happen in our life. Amen? Yeah. Just everyday things that we go through and everyday circumstances, He will teach us things through them. Mm. Even if there's times that we made the wrong decision and got ourselves into something we shouldn't, He can still teach us something out of that. Amen? He was a master teacher. He was always teaching them something. He was teaching them something with a few fishes and some, and some bread. Amen? Amen? He was teaching them something whenever He would tell the multitude that, that, that uh, to uh, sit down you know, on the, on the grass whenever there wasn't even no grass there, but it rose up to meet their tail before they hit the ground. Amen? He would teach them things, how that He 